Okay, guys, so here's the deal. So um, Joseph Campbell came up with this theory about, uh, about the protagonist in any story, mainly called The Hero. And um, he published his work, he published his findings in a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces. And this guy researched every major story in every culture, in every faith, um, in every subculture across the world, going back thousands and thousands of years. And he found commonalities in, in every major story, so much so that, that he was able to basically find cookie cutters, and he called those things archetypes. Archetypes are a type of character that is, you know, things will change from story to story. Uh, character traits will change, names will change, cultures will change, genders will change, but the type of character will never change. Um, you know, you can think of these things almost like cookie cutters, okay? Um, that these are things that uh, the details change, but the basics are all the same. So Joseph Campbell came up with these with these uh, these things, and he came up with this cyclical journey for the hero. It basically looks exactly wow basically looks exactly like a circle um, with kind of a line cutting through the top third of it. Um, it's, it's interesting because the hero, if you can picture the hero like this on a journey, um, he starts in his own world and he crosses the threshold into an unknown world. We'll call this the known world, and we'll call this the unknown world. Where does the conflict begin? Where is that inciting incident? Where can you guys guess? Take a sec, think about it. Look at over here. Can you see a commonality? Oh, I bet we can. I bet we can. Look at this. Here's that inciting incident right here, crossing the threshold, and he goes into conflict in the unknown world, getting to his bottommost part, right about here. This may be halfway through the story, maybe two-thirds of the way through the story, but he's going through conflict and things, you know, he's still in the unknown world. He's not having a great time. Are things getting better? Maybe. Until he crosses, crosses this threshold and comes back into his known world. Now, the hero, what's been special about him is that he's learned a couple of things along the way. But let's see if we can connect this back to back to Aristotle and back to Freytag. We've got act one, status quo. This is our normal world. This is our normal right over here. This is the hero's world. This is his normal. This is his known. Okay. Then he gets into conflict. He crosses the threshold into the unknown. And he hits the climax, and then everything resolves really quickly, and he, and he quickly returns to the known world. I had a professor one time in university that uh, we studied um, we studied children's literature with him, and we looked at Harry Potter, and Harry Potter actually follows the hero's journey quite well, um, follows all three of these plot structures really, really well. He has his known world with the, with the, the Dursleys. He you know, is not having a great time, but he crosses the threshold. He gets the letter from Hogwarts. Hagrid comes to get him, and suddenly he crosses into a whole new world of things, and it is unknown, and things increase, and tension increases, and everything else, and then what happens? At the end of the story, he hits the climax. He, he wins the day, and what happens? Goes back to the Dursleys, right? The conflict drops quickly. He's back in his known world, and he's back with the Dursleys, and that's something really interesting. Uh, my prof always called it the home away home uh, kind of a story. You know, you see it in The Wizard of Oz with Dorothy too, right? That Dorothy is in Oz. Things are, uh, Dorothy's in Canvas. Can, can, I can't talk right now. It's 8.30 at night. I can't even talk. Um, Dorothy's in Kansas. She's not enjoying things. She hopes for another world. And what happens? She gets whisked away on a tornado to an unknown world called Oz. Okay? Spend some time there. Melts a witch, which is the highest point of you know, tension, things quickly, quickly subside. And then what happens? She goes back to her known world.
So you can see that, guys, in the in the known world in Act One, unknown world in Act Two, and then and then very very quickly, short Act Three, back to the known world. So we've got these three authors, Aristotle, Freytag, and Campbell, and they really do play an important role. And each of these three models of storytelling is important. But keep in mind that while they have a lot of overlap, they you know they have their distinct qualities, and and you can refer to any one of these uh, storytelling. Uh, models, if you want to call them that, throughout our time here. And, and, and Ms. Harms and Ms. Bird and I will understand what you're talking about. You don't have to talk about, you know, um, you don't have to stick to one model. You can use any one of these models in talking to us and, and we'll know exactly what you're talking about. Um, but keep in mind, there's a lot of overlap. There's a lot of things to, you know, a lot of ways to say the same thing, but these are the three basic models of storytelling. So there you go. In a nutshell, Freytag, Aristotle, Campbell. Okay, next video.